Okay. So welcome everyone to tonight's Human Rights and Relations Commission meeting on um, November 10th, 2021. I just want to take a quick attendance just to make sure I'm not missing anyone at the moment. I have Deborah Cohen, I have Alex. Oh goodness, the last name say it for us. Koliakovo. There we go. Thank you. I apologize for that. Um, Carolyn Owen, Jessica Martin, and Barbara Brew. Anybody I missed? And we are still under the governor's executive order to hold virtual meetings. Um, and that is actually something that we can discuss um, at the end of this meeting for our, our upcoming meetings, um, what we would like to do from there. Okay, but we can get right to it. So I will pass it over to the chair, Deborah Cohen. Okay, and according to my iPad, it is just 7.05 and we'll call the meeting to order officially right now. Um, the first or the second order of business is the approval of the minutes. Did everybody get the minutes from our last meeting? Yes. It's in the attachment with the invite today, and those are from the September 8th, 2021 meeting. Um, any comments, any changes, anything about the minutes that need attention? No, would someone like to- uh, the minutes be accepted as printed. Second. Was that you, Jessica? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm gonna try not to take a lot of time tonight, but the next, the next order of business is discussion and sharing information with our, with commission chair, Deb Cohen. And this time I really made a list. Um, <laughs> not to frighten you away. There are six things on the list, but some of them are really short. So, here we go. Um, a couple of questions were asked before we officially started the meeting about the program for um, co-sponsoring an Afghan family here in Wethersfield. So this is what I know so far. Um, a, a core group of uh, residents here in um, Wethersfield got together, put out some feelers, and so far three churches. I believe it's Trinity First Church and another one, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, are having a Zoom call in just about a half an hour with Chris George from Iris. Um, it's really crucial that we get congregations and large organizations together to sign on because as Barbara mentioned before, it really takes somewhere between at least ten and twelve thousand dollars to get a group started. Um, that money is used to um, rent an apartment, totally stock the apartment with furniture and food and all of the daily living necessities. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, um, Deb, I think was yes. a third one price the king. Does that sound familiar? Uh, that sounds familiar, yes, it might that, be. That might be it, just it I thought I heard something like that as well. Okay, um, I apologize to Christ the King. Um, so anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing about the results of tonight's call um, with Chris George. And then I think we'll have a much better idea of what we might want to ask from individuals in the community. Um, we're certainly not asking everybody to make a major financial investment, but from my understanding, they're looking for teams of between 30 and 50 people to get all of the jobs done, uh, not just ahead of the arrival of a family, but also continuing with the family once they've arrived. So I will have more um, information about that hopefully very soon after tonight. I did want to ask a question, but I think I, I hope I know the answer. Um, Erica, if this, if this does get said, if a plan is put in place here in Wethersfield, can we do a big posting about it on our page? Yeah, I don't see why not. I would just need to see what we plan to put up and then I'll, if right. I 
approve it, I'll get it approved, but I don't see why not if it's something that um, is getting sponsored throughout town. Okay. Just, yep. Okay. And basically it would be inviting individuals to join the effort as they are able with a list of the sorts of things we expect that we might need. Okay. Speaking from a little bit of experience, um, some years back, my congregation had an influx of Karen refugees. And what, what basically happened is one of the things we did is we developed a list of what people needed. And you'd be surprised if people look around your house, what you have that's extra, that's in good shape, that you know you don't have to be apologetic for. Um, so I think if we have three significant congregations, I mean, Christ the King is, that's, that's um, Corpus Christi on Silas Dean and um, Sacred Heart and Old Weathersfield. Those are big congregations. Um, I just think that you'd be surprised how quickly people pull stuff together. Well, I participated in this kind of effort with a family from Mexico two summers ago, and it all fell together beautifully. Um, they, they, they moved into a fully furnished apartment. The refrigerator was stocked. I, and I have faith that Weathersfield can do it. So we'll, we'll go from there. Um, <clears throat> any other questions or comments about this? I don't want to move on if there's more discussion. <clears throat> Alex, I know you had some thoughts on that as well. If you, if you want to take it a moment to share anything. Yeah, I saw it on uh, Lamont. He said that the rents would be guaranteed for the refugees. So it seems like they're, I'm not sure what type of program it is, but they're paying the rent in full, security deposit. Um, I know a lot of landlords don't like, you know, people with uh, non-working or credit scores established, but I have a group of landlords that would be happy to, you know, rent to them with their, whatever the state voucher is. Thank you. We're coming after you very soon. <laughs> yeah, Springfield and all over Connecticut. So we should be able to, wherever we have some families, we can get him somewhere. Thank That's you. Great. Excellent. Hi, Maria. Welcome. We got started, so we're moving on. Do you have your mute button on or off? Uh, now it's off. Okay. Um, okay, that was one of the things that I wanted to tell you about. The other thing that I wanted to mention that's come up before, um, Erica, I guess you and I are meeting with Bonnie Therian next Thursday at four o'clock. Um, we need to get an official okay from the town in order to sponsor um, a call with Dora Rodriguez, which would occur on our next, I think it's our next monthly scheduled meeting date, January 12th. Is that what we decided? <clears throat> that was definitely discussed, yes. Okay. Um, and for those of you who, who may have missed some of the details, Dora Rodriguez came from El Salvador, I believe it was in 1979. Um, she went through the whole horrible experience of having to cross the desert. She did not have documentation. She almost died during the experience, but luckily was found by border patrol. She survived. She built a life in the Tucson area and is now a prominent um, immigrant rights activist. And one of the reasons that I'm interested in having um, an evening with Dora uh, and other people besides our commission would be invited to this call is that I really think um, a lot of people still don't understand why people are coming under any circumstances necessary. I still hear people say, I don't mind immigrants coming, but I want them to come legally. And I think one of the, one of the most poignant parts of Dora's presentation um, is talking about why she couldn't wait. So hopefully after speaking with Bonnie, we'll get an okay to do this. And if we do, I'm going to need um, someone with real technical experience to help put the actual call together. Um, what I'm envisioning is a call with a moderator on screen with Dora. Um, anybody listening into the call will not be on screen and they'll be muted, but they will be able to type 
questions into either a chat or a Q&A, and another one of us would be available to read those questions when her presentation is finished. So um, I'm just I'm just going to wait until after Thursday when we have a clear go ahead, and then I'll I'll be reaching out to people for their um, expertise technologically. Yeah, Bonnie, um, I know many of you um, probably already know, but Bonnie Therian is um, the interim town manager. And I um, just wanted to run things by any presentation, anything big, we kind of just want to get approval for. And she's very interested just to know a little more and to know about the um, commission, because there was a commission when she was actually the town manager uh, years ago. So she was interested in just having a quick meeting. And I said, you know, you're more than welcome to speak to myself and Deb, and Deb has a lot of information she could share. Okay, thank you, Erica. Yeah. Okay, so that's two of the six we've already done. Um, I also wanted to tell you about two events happen coming from the Windsor Human Rights Commission. One is on November 14th, which is coming up very shortly. They are having a, a conversation on race. Um, and then on February 1st, there is going to be with the same commission, and this is all on Zoom, on February 1st, there's going to be a discussion of the book by John Lewis, um, Across That Bridge, A Vision for Change and the Future of America. Um, I've, I've attended many of that um, commission's Zoom meetings or events, and they never fail to to teach me something. And if um, I can, what I'll do is put a link to those two things in an email to our whole commission. And then if you can, and if you're interested, you can join. Is that okay? Yeah, I think we could even put it on the Facebook page. So if anybody, or do, you, do they just want commission members? Um, no, I, this is, I think this is for the public. Let me double check because I need okay. to- check with Judge Washington on something else. I'll let you know tomorrow. No, that's great. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see, let's see. Oh, I have a question about, um, are all of you familiar with the Dazzling Dozen program from the Hunger Action Team here in town? Maria, you'd better be, because you're on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm nodding, yes. Okay. In the forest here. Very briefly, the Hunger Action Team has a program called the Dazzling Dozen, during which we try to get at least one, if not more, organizations mm -hmm. or groups in town to sponsor a food drive for the food bank. Um, and uh, Maria, you'll hear more about this um, later with the hunger action team but this time around we're trying to really kind of tighten it up um, have public appreciation and also publicly spotlight groups and and organizations who are participating and erica that was another thing that i was going to ask can we post information about that on our page yes okay mm -hmm. okay um okay I think there was just a, a food drive that I know a lot of us on Main Street participated in had to do with the police department. Yes. Yes. It was yes. quite successful, I understand. Right. Oh, good. The, fir the first responders drive? Yeah. Yes. It was it was extremely successful. We um we took in, I believe, over 50 boxes of food. And wow. um, yeah, uh, over Wonderful. $1,200 in cash, um, almost $500 in gift cards. It was very successful. So thank you for everyone who participated. And is, you know, one of the things I've come across is there's a real need for like paper products and, and all the things you can't buy. Yeah. Um, there was a really good list I saw put out. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we should sort of pass that around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we could be posting the ever-changing needs list. Yeah. Um, because it's not always the same things that are needed. Right. So we, we'll put it together. Okay. I usually try to put up a repost of whatever the Hunger Action Team posts or the Weathersfield Food Drive posts online. Thank you. 
Um, Carolyn, you are the, the lifeblood of that page. Thank you, thank you. He's our guru. Yes. Um, just a couple more things. Uh, Jessica, you might want to weigh in if I forget any information about this. And I know, Carolyn, you participated in an early call. There is now a group called the Commissioner Collaborative in Connecticut. And this started off with um, a small group of people who wanted to bring not just commissioners, not just chairs, but commissioners from groups across the state together to see how we could collaborate and put all of our best ideas together. And there is now a um, Facebook page. I'm not sure if commissioners need to be or commission members need to be specifically invited. I will check that, but I would really urge everybody to check out the page. Um, at, on the last call, what we talked about <clears throat> um, was establishing the group um, whose purpose is to cross-reference events, ideas, questions, and experience. Um, so at this point, I want to say, Jessica, are you there? Because I can't see you. Well, I, okay. Yes. So I, I, I need to say thank you to Jessica for something because she was on the last call and we were talking about what each of our commissions do. And Jessica reminded me that while we have not as yet actually sponsored events, or the big, the big picture things that we have a dedication to, to educating and putting out information out there to the, into the public. And, and I was reminded that we do that on so many fronts, whether it be the food bank or the calendar days or whatever it is. So first I want to repeat my thank you to Jessica for reminding me of that. And then I just also want to say thank you to everybody on this commission for <clears throat> all of the contributions and really helping to get us started. So um, I, if I send out an email, I'll also put, I'll put a reminder of that page in that note. Um, Deborah, just so you yes. know, I think, I think the group is, is set to private. So I don't know that it's searchable for people who are not members of the group. So you might have to invite the other commissioners. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll do that. Okay, and then the last thing <clears throat> that I wanted to tell you about and, and just ask if anybody is interested in joining the conversation. Um, I got a, start, a conversation started with Deborah Raymond from the Chamber of Commerce. And then for a few, more than a few personal reasons, I dropped the ball and now time is getting tight. But I had approached her last year and this year with, um, and I don't want to offend anybody here. I don't want to put that right out. But I approached her with a concern of mine about holidays on Maine, the December celebration that happens here in Weathersfield all the time. And my concern was that there's an S at the end of holidays but it seems that there is only one holiday that is recognized during holidays on Maine. And I'm really anxious to see if there's a way that we can diversify that event, either to diversify that event or to do other things at other times so that all of the residents in our town are recognized for the celebrations <clears throat> in their lives. So um, <clears throat> after sending an email to Deborah, Raymond today apologizing for having dropped the ball. There seems to be a few other people who are interested in picking it up again. And I'm putting it out here to this group in case anyone here um, has an interest or feedback now or ideas. Um, just wanna open it up to conversation. And it might even be a disagreement. I, that's okay. Um, I recognize that I'm, I'm tackling something that it's an old Weathersfield tradition, um, but hopefully I'm doing it respectfully. Well, so. it's probably been an old Weathersfield tradition because nobody's ever raised the issue particularly. <laughs> I mean, 
if you think about it. I mean, I'm aware that, that you've raised the issue, but there's not exactly been a groundswell. But I think, you know, we have, um, we have a synagogue on Main Street and I'm sure we have a significant Muslim population on the town. Yes, yes. So we well, need to figure out a way. And now this year, I think, doesn't Hanukkah sort of fall around holidays it's a, on no, Main? It's at the, no, it's at, what, when is holidays on Main? December 2nd. Okay, yeah, Hanukkah is the very end of November. Now it's possible that nothing will be done this year because we're really running short on time unless in a, in a, um, a conversation to take place soon, there are some really great ideas that we can implement. Um, <clears throat> I suppose it wouldn't be terrible if it wasn't implemented this year, but we took the next year to really work on it and put a lot of thoughtful um, ideas to use. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Well, Hanukkah um, this year runs from the 29th to December 6th. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's early. Okay, so it's early this year. It's early yes. this year because sometimes yes. it's like right around Christmas. Uh, Christmas. Am, right, I, but... am I remembering something that hasn't happened? I thought the synagogue had a, 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 a menorah out that they lit another bulb every night. They do. Okay. They do. I don't think that is, um, I don't think that's particularly a part of holidays on Maine, which no, is, it isn't. I'm just, right. I can tell you, and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. Um, I did have a couple of conversations with the new rabbi at the synagogue and his enthusiasm did not match mine. So <laughs> I think that was one of the reasons why I kind of let it go for a little while. Um, but well, he must no. have been the one that did the benediction at the town council swearing in then. He's older. Um, Rabbi Lefkowitz? Maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, just to let you know, I did, I did reach out and um, it probably won't be including the synagogue at least this time around. So that's my list. In terms of um, this particular subject, you've covered a lot. Um, I think we may not be able to do anything this year, but we should do something because it seems awkward to say the least that you have holidays on Main and you've got a temple or synagogue like right in the center of it. And Barbara also raised a, an important point that we have a percentage of our population which are Muslim. Mm -hmm. And they have holidays as well. And these are all happy occasions. And any ex occasion we can celebrate good holidays um, that coincide, I think that's fabulous. Um, and it's a way of learning, going back to your point earlier about education. Mm -hmm. um, I also, so that's, so I'm all for that. Um, I sent, like on my private Facebook, I didn't think of it, is, and I, and I think you saw it, Deborah the, and I forget what it was, but it was the site that was like sharing um, Sephardic music. Yes. And I shared it and I hope you know that they had a second date. They were so popular, people signing up for the virtual that they mm -hmm. have a second date and that's out there. And I say that, which is to say that we could do things like that in, independent or in addition to anything we do in terms of with a chamber, you can put things up like that. I mm -hmm. admit I have a particular interest in Sephardic music because my ancestry comes from Spain and that kind of music is something that is very familiar to me. I happen to be a Roman Catholic, but it don't matter, as they say, because that's music that is the, the kind of music that would have been popular during the Middle Ages in Spain. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't know that <coughs> until you get exposed. So that's what other things we can do. Just like in terms of education um, in a different area, which by the way, thank you, Miss Carolyn, who's wonderful, and e Erica on this for two things. Um, in terms of education, for instance, a lot of folks, it's amazing to me, don't know, and I admit to being someone who learned recently the how origins of how we came up with Columbus Day. And Columbus Day basically became a national holiday because then President McKinley decided, let's compensate. These are oversimplifying a little bit the fact that Sicilians in Louisiana were lynched. Yes. That's how we got there. 
It wasn't somebody woke up and said, let's pick Columbus Day. It was basically, how do we try to make people feel in included after something that horrific? And there's, and I only happen to know that because I have a friend who happens to be part Sicilian and she knew that and she sent me some articles. I said, oh my God, I didn't know that. Um, and those are the kinds of things that connect people and give you a context of things. And, and I'm not gonna go further on that because it's a complicated subject, but the point is education, education, education enlightens us as to our history and why we have certain history and why certain things are important to others, et cetera. There's an, often not a lot of people who also know that if you were brown and you were from places like Texas, lynching was not uncommon. It's just part of our history. Right. And we need to just understand that to do better in terms of educating ourselves about that. So it's always a learning thing there. And that's in the context of education. That's why I sent out, and Erica, thank you for saying that that's groovy to put on the website is my, uh, the thing I sent out for Fairfield University. It happens to be my, my alma mater. So I'm very proud of them, but they also have a, a whole chair, which is basically, I don't know if it's an alum or family of the alum, that font that has contributed over the years for the, um, he, I call them Hebrew studies, but that's not the term. And when I saw the piece about a, neck, a scholar, if you will, on the subject of the Nuremberg trials, I want, I think that's important to put it up there because I fear that there are many folks don't know what the Nuremberg trials were. <clears throat> and the subject of those trials hasn't changed. Evil is alive and well in terms of depriving people of their civil and basic human dignity. And we need to put that stuff up. So um, yeah, let's keep doing that education thing because we don't want to repeat our history and we can't not know if we don't know. Well, a couple of years ago, there were at least two events. One I know was at Trinity Church where a group of Muslims came and spoke. And mm -hmm. then at the community center, there had been a, a, um, a dinner given for the end of Ramadan. Nice. And I could probably dig around and find that material somewhere in the vast supply of paper I had. Okay. Um, I have a question for both Erica and Carolyn. Is the, is the system for getting things approved for posting going smoothly and easily? Is that okay with both of you? It's, it's working for me. It's working very well for me. It's fine. I just email Erica, whatever we need <laughs> reviewed, and she reviews it, and then I post it, so... Okay, I, I try to send anything that I'm asking to have posted to both of you at the same time, so. That's fine. That works, that helps, because okay. I, I, I just reply all. So. Okay, I'll keep doing it that way. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. um, any other conversation about my list of six things? <laughs> well, well you know, your list, oh, sorry. I was going to say on, on the um, on the Afghan family, um, I think as soon as we know who's coming, for instance, I could probably put together an entire male wardrobe for someone who is five foot 10 and weighed 154 pounds. Hold on to it because you don't know yeah. when we're going to need it. Thank you so much. Because, you know, some things just in the families have to be cleaned out at some point. Right. Right. And my heart appreciates you for that. Well, um, <laughs> um, the, just know that it's very common for a community to find out that a family is coming 48 be hours good. before they come. So um, the apartment being furnished and the kitchen being stocked um, needs to be in place before they come. We'll be looking for people to um, make the connections with the school system and medical care. Um, to teach them about the transportation system in town, to walk them through the job application. So we're gonna need a lot of people um, and all of that work really needs to take place ahead of time. So we've got our work cut out for us. Um, <clears throat> and um, please let me know if individually you wanna be on the list of people who are interested in helping on an individual basis because um, we're starting a we're starting an email list, but nothing has happened with it yet. So, Deborah, 
Yeah. Yes. You know, you know, I'm a yes, but just for the record, yes. Okay. Um, I just okay. want, so that's one. Secondly, I want to say thank you to Alex and all his efforts with regard to housing, because this afternoon I was on a call with, you know, a gazillion people, which is a call through, um, organized by the White House, which the subject was about Afghans um, and the resettlement process. And the thing that they spent two thirds of the call on was housing, housing, housing. Mm -hmm. Everything else is workable, but you need to have a roof over people's heads. Right. And then they explained that in terms of the money that comes out of the resell, resell, let's call it resettlement funds, um, just to oversimplify, is a short term thing. And the total amount only covers like maybe eight months worth of pay. And their goal is, so the person who, uh, this person was from the State Department. Whatever the division within the State Department does with resettlement said, it's like seed money. But the goal is to get people employed as soon as possible, not only for mental health reasons, but also to be able to start paying for things. Because even though they may be eligible for food stamps and things like that, short term, long term, they're not guaranteed uh, the money for that. And of course, as she pointed out, if you're eligible for food stamps as a refugee, she called them something else. They had another legal term, but um, the aid, whether it being food stamps, that's obviously not going to be enough to feed anyone because food stamps is just bare minimum. Um, so I just want to say again to Alex, thank you for that, because they went on and on about housing, housing, because everything revolves around housing. Right. And it makes sense because if you're applying for a job, you have to have an address, right? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, the same problem that homeless, you know, the issue that homeless people have. The other thing that they mentioned a lot was the numbers. It doesn't matter what the raw numbers were, but basically what they were saying is in terms of Afghans coming to the States, the number of Afghans that they expect coming in weekly is like the equivalent of what it was at the height under the Obama administration monthly. So that's just to say, uh, whatever we do will be appreciated. And they talked about being helpful in individual ways. So they were big on that in the, so that everyone can <clears throat> be helpful, whichever way they choose to be, whether it's helping through the housing in an organized fashion, whether it's helping them apply for jobs, for getting kids enrolled in school, translations, but also little you know, individual things um, like grocery shop. My mother remembers right. that because my mother remembers it like it was yesterday when she got off in her case a plane, the first grocery shop. Keep in mind, my family happens to be Cuban. Believe me, there are a lot of foods that she had never seen before. I'm and sure. certainly not the abundance of those foods either. Um, so, but she remembers the person who gave her a coat. Like in our family's case, Catholic Charities gave us our coats. And we remember that because if you come from a warm climate, a coat is something you would never would have had. Right. And I think of that when I think of folks from Afghanistan because their weather is warm and very warm and very cold. So that's just my little, what I found, learned about this morning. It's like, we're gonna have them for a while in terms of their explanation of the numbers. We're gonna have waves of them. And it sounds like they said that every governor has like a go-to person that oversees it in their state in terms of the refugees coming in. So I don't know who that is. Uh, in Connecticut, but Lamont seems to have a go-to person for pretty much everything. So I don't know if you know who that is, but it, it may be Iris. It may be yeah. the Iris organization. Yeah, it probably is. <clears throat> um, because, yeah. because the the various resettlement, I'm more familiar with Massachusetts because that's where the Lutherans hang out. But um, it, you know, before, before the disaster of the past four, four years when we had that guy, um, I mean, there usually were, there are a couple of significant refugee organizations across the country. There's Lutheran Immigration Refugee yep. Service, there's Catholic Charities, and then there's smaller groups around like IRIS. Mm -hmm. And they would all work with the State Department and they'll work together and they all sort of divvy up who's taking how many people um, yep. because it, it's a matter of, of capacity. And I, I know when our board was told that we were getting 500 people, um, it was, we were like, holy cow um but the people are stepping this is the largest refugee resettlement at once since vietnam that's what they said today wow. and they also mentioned not going into specific states but they said that for people who want to volunteer that they're actually having 
a good problem, which is so many volunteers want to do so much and so many donations. And they're basically said, if you put yourself on the list, don't be surprised if you get called later because they don't have enough persons to oversee the volunteers and oversee all right. the plethora <clears throat> of donations. So it's heartwarming to know that people are willing to put themselves out there, but that just tells you that the organizations are trying to organize all of that. But, yeah, and the, uh, the, yeah. model, the model that they're using, which is a little bit different than what has typically been done, is setting up these community groups because it's the only way they yep. can do it. You right. know, they can't hire enough staff. Exactly. So, yeah, because they were talking about, you still have people at the Air Force bases. They have titles for them, you know, call them different categories, but you still have the people at the Air Force bases that they're still processing. Then you have the people who are at launch pads, they call them which are folks who've been processed. And then the last step is essentially when they get assigned wherever they're going to be assigned to. And then they talked all about all the myriad of interconnected federal agencies that touch each one of these refugees, whether it's Homeland Security, whether it's the FBI. It was interesting. Some of it I knew, some of it was fascinating to listen to. So that for those people who think these folks are coming unvetted, oh my God, I was exhausted listening to all the things they have to go through. They have to get COVID shots. They have to get flu shots. They have to get this shot, that shot. They have to be processed through the FBI. They have to be vetted. God bless them. I don't know how they did that because getting documents out of a country that isn't an established government, <laughs> that doesn't work well, but they did. So the good news is these folks have, <clears throat> they've gone through the ringer just to get to this point and they're still bringing them in. So it sounds like we're gonna be doing this. We'll have opportunities for a while to help. And maybe it will remind us that there are so many others that need to come. Mm -hmm. um, Somali, Sudan, Liberia, you know, it just, we have the room. I mean, Germany went in 2015, when, and the, when there, the part of the world was falling apart, the Germans took in a million refugees, a million, a country with 90 million people took in a million refugees. And they're only, this, they're not as big as Texas. Thank well, you, Maria. Angela Merkel. <laughs> it also helps because Angela Merkel, if I remember my history, her yeah. father was a Lutheran minister. So yeah. I have a feeling that her faith yeah. had something to do with it. And she took a political hit for doing that. She doesn't regret the it. Thank Germany, God. The president of Germany at the time happened to be a Lutheran minister. So yeah. And, and, and you know, when I think what Maria and I share is a passion because we come from families of refugees. I mean, my mother who constantly says, I remember going to the American consulate at, for, ten, for nine months and the guy wouldn't sign my visa, wouldn't sign my visa. I needed another paper, I needed another paper. And, and my, my daughter-in-law who had to go to Brazil for five weeks to be asked the following difficult question. Well, after you came, did you ever go, come, did you leave and come back? Did you help anyone else in the country? Oh, and how long have you known your husband? Eight right. years, okay, okay, you passed. But for five weeks in the middle of a COVID pandemic, she had to go to Brazil. Right. Don't get me started. Well, no, Maria, yeah. <clears throat> Maria mentioned the vetting. So another important thing for anyone who is interested in volunteering at all to know <clears throat> is that there are extremely strict guidelines. They're not, they're not really guidelines, very strict rules and expectations set up by IRIS. Um, and you don't just put a group together and call them and say, okay, we'll take a family we will be vetted through IRIS. Anybody who's a volunteer will need a background check, all that sort of thing. Even if it's someone who is just going to make deliveries to the house. Uh, if, if, if you're going to be doing anything where there will be contact with the family, person to person, you need to be vetted through IRIS. So this isn't gonna happen overnight, but I'm, I'm excited and I have to remain hopeful that we're going to do this as quickly as possible. More? Thank you. Great discussion. I just had a few things that I'll just get out of the way. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to mention um, the Social Justice Coalition, just keep it on our radar. I don't know how many of, um, of you are um, participating, but um, just to update that they're pretty much broken up into subcommittees now. Um, so um, that's been working out very well. 
Um, but we, they're always looking that if people want to join to please reach out and um, register for the, the monthly meetings. The next one is next Thursday, which is the 18th. Um, and they're actually going to start being a hybrid model as of next week. Oh. So we'll be in person yes. at the school as well as offering it stream through, through Zoom as well. Okay. Uh, and Great. the subcommittees will be broken up in different rooms at the high school with um, Zooming capabilities for their subcommittees. That is the best news ever. Yeah. So it's, it's so hard on well. Zoom to do that kind of work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're very excited and we'll see how it goes, but their plan is to continue that um, going forward until um, they see what they, they just learned that um, when they put out a, um, like a, you know, like a little Google, I mean, a doodle poll um, survey that a lot of people like the, the option of being able to zoom in if they, if they couldn't make it in person. Mm -hmm. um, and then some people thought it, they really would benefit from being in person. So a hybrid model was the way to go once we looked at all the data from the survey. Great. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. And with that, I wanted to um, mention that um, we're slowly seeing some boards and commission go back in person. So um, our next meeting is set for January. I know we're looking to possibly have a presentation, <clears throat> presentation at that point, but just to keep in mind, I don't know if we want to have a discussion now or we want some time to think about it. Um, what would this group like? Um, unfortunately, with the town's boards and commissions, we can't do a hybrid model, um, at least not yet, um, just because of the technicalities with it. Um, but with that being said, um, we can have a discussion if we would like to start meeting in person or if we would like to continue with Zoom until the executive order has been lifted. Well, I have to say this, um, given my circumstances at the moment, I'm very grateful for the Zoom meetings because it's sometimes hard for me to get out because I'm sort of split between two households part of the week. So um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate the Zoom. And, and I mean, I think our conversations flow pretty well. I mean, there may be, is it, once we make the decision to go in person, can, can we alternate or do we have to no, we have to. Yeah. No, and I think you heard us kind of a couple, um, Maria and Barbara, you're on my youth advisory board as well. Um, the difficulty is that we have to give so much notice okay. in person, and then we have to have the space um, reserved right. um, to meet in person. Um, so it just, right now we're limited on, you know, um, uh, conference meeting room space that we can use that can, you can all social distance. So we would all be, all the boards and commission will be looking to use and um, use all those space. So it would just be difficult right now to, to have that happen. I don't have a preference. I'm willing to go the way that others would choose. I mean, it's always nice to see you, but <laughs> all of you, um, but if there's a need to continue this way, um, I agree with Barbara. I think that we're we're having the conversations that are necessary, um, and that's that's the work. So, <coughs> excuse me. I would prefer yeah. to continue to meet virtually. Okay. So add me to the list from my in. Yeah, I prefer the Zoom option, especially now that you're in the jungle. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Instead of San Francisco. Yes, I'm, I'm in Brazil. Alex <laughs> or Jessica? Or losing Any their, preference? Their lives. Everything's fine with me. So okay. either or, but no, uh, no preference. Okay, Jessica, I don't, I'm not sure if you can hear us right now, but if you can just chime in and let me know what your thoughts are. So we will plan for our next, um, for our next couple of meetings going forward, which would be January and March. Um, would be virtual unless that has to change, but I will keep you guys updated, okay? Great. Well, and after that, the weather gets nice and we can always meet in the town hall parking lot like my town <laughs> committee. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should step up a little bit and maybe Loretta's dream, Millwood's Park. <laughs> yeah. 
It's quite entertaining. At one meeting, there was a guy, he kept driving around and around. I'm sure. And you're like, what is going on here? <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad we got that out of the way. So I'll just mark that down. Um, do we want to do a formal vote about meeting, continuing to meet via Zoom? I think we could. I don't think we need a formal vote. I think okay. we're sort of on the same page. We'll keep right, it easy. Perfect. All right, perfect. Thank you. Okay. And then was there anything more about social media and outreach? No, I think we, we talked, talked a lot about that. that. Yeah, I just wanted to get a check in with Carolyn. I didn't want her to think that we're not supporting her if she needs anything or if any of the group needs us to be doing anything. Um, just wanted to throw it out there. So I think we're good unless someone has something they'd like to um, mention. No, just please send things along. Um, the commissioner's group was talking about doing a post for um, International Human Rights Day. So um, in mm -hmm. honor of um, human rights and um, the Decla Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we were talking about ways to do that and if there was a way that we could post something that all the commissions would post. So I think that's something maybe we'll be working on. It's December 10th, so we have a little bit of time to think about, but anything we post, we'll send to Erica for review. So. <laughs> Lucky Erica, she, has, she gets to look at it all. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it all works out i try to do it as fast as possible <laughs> thank you, you. Too. thank you um we have covered everything that's on the agenda but does anyone have anything else that you'd like to bring up tonight yes apparently we have a new police chief oh yes we do? Mm -hmm. yes we do and who is it ralph you know? ina I'm sorry. Ralph Medina, he is the assistant chief in, in Hartford, Hartford currently. Um, I believe he's been there for the past three years, uh, just about. Okay. Um, and prior to that, he worked um, with the state troopers. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was curious, not only as a citizen, but because I was fortunate to be on one of the interview panels. So I yes. was very, very interested in who, who was the one because you got to hear from all of them and they're all yes. wonderful. They're all wonderful in different ways. And I'm glad well, I'm not the one that had to make that decision. <laughs> right. And this is, this is the first chief that's from outside the, the Weathersfield Police Department. Um, Setran, um, Karen Jekas and, and um, now nah. nah, all came. I mean, so we've had We've had chiefs from inside the Weathersfield Police Department probably for the last 50 years. Yes. Well, so, I'm looking forward change. to a new beginning. Absolutely. It sounds like when, it. When does he start or has he started? He has not. He gets sworn in on November 22nd at 9 a.m. at Town Hall. Is that open to the public? I believe so. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Just, just curious. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, he was, um, Bonnie Therian announced it at the swearing in of the town council Monday night. Oh, okay. Their first order of business, right? Yeah. And, and evidently it was, a, it's a town manager pick. It's not, it does not go through the council. And, mm -hmm. you know, Bonnie has a long history with this town and I think it was very wise for her to be picked as the interim. Um, she was well liked when she was the manager here. She's familiar with the players and sort of the ethos. Good. Yeah. And she can't oh, wait wonderful. for us to hire a new town manager so she can go home. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, it's been a good transition so far. So we appreciate that. But they have they have started the um, national search for a town manager. Um, so that it's in the works as well. Um, and yes, we have a new police chief that will be starting. So we can maybe hopefully invite him to an upcoming human rights meeting and introduce ourselves. Um, or at least um, maybe, you know, in the, not the near, near future, but sometime in 2022. <laughs> right. I like that idea a lot. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's and, wonderful. And, and this is the sore subject, but there was a front page article in the New York Times in the past couple of days um, about cars being used as weapons against the police. Um, and it was like about a three page story in the Times. I think it was Sunday, but I'm not positive. <clears throat> 
But if anybody's interested, it's sitting on my bedroom floor, which I am not in my bedroom at the moment. So I can't tell you because I'm not in that house. Right. But, um, it struck me. Um, the other, just to mention on, um, on the same kind of um, page as this, is that the, there is, um, they swore in the Newtown Council. Um, mm -hmm. Almost everybody is similar, except um, Tyler Flanagan is no longer on town council and um, Ken Messer is now back on town council. Mm -hmm. I did not hear yet if um, Matt Forrest is going to be our liaison still um, okay. for town council. So I will let everyone know as soon as I get that notice. Cause sometimes okay. they switch, um, switch different commissions and boards that they um, attend. So I will let you guys know as soon as I hear that. Okay. And Tyler Flanagan lost by five votes. I know. I know. Talk about every yeah. vote being important. Absolutely. And that's, and that's why the day on election day, I said to someone, you need to go vote because your vote does matter can make the difference. Mm -hmm. And not to be prophetic, but literally five votes is five yeah. votes. Right. Yeah. Um, Originally, they thought it was three, but when they did the recount, yeah. they found two more. Right. Yeah. So we got to experience democracy in action in our town. Um, I don't want to forget today. This month is Nat Native American month. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, we can celebrate that every day, but if we want to make it special, it is this month. Um, I'm trying to remember, well, tomorrow obviously is Veterans Day. Don't want mm -hmm. to forget that because what we, our ability to agree to disagree on the whole host of things is thanks to many people who sacrificed, meaning veterans as well as their families. Because when mm -hmm. I say veterans, I mean family because veterans don't do what they can if they don't have supportive families. So it's just a point of remembrance because tomorrow is the official recognition, but that can be done any day of the week. Um, and sacrifice comes in all forms. And they will be holding uh, the Veterans Day event tomorrow at the high school, high school. Upper, upper level of Cantone Field at 11 a.m. Okay. I just want to make my pitch there because thank you to Miss Barbara's father for his service. My father-in-law, rest his soul, did his tour. He did five years um, and everyone else that came before them and after. And I just hope we can get to the day that we don't have to celebrate because there won't be any. Yeah, well, and we're, like with you. Just, we're with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> and th this is slightly ancient history, but there used to be a place in town called Silas Dean Drugstore. It's now Max Bebo. And yeah. it was run by two brothers by the name of Cy and Don Levine. And they actually had, there were actually four Levine brothers and all four of them served in World War II. And because my, I grew um, Don's daughter is a good friend of mine from high school. And all I could think about is, can you imagine the stress for those parents having four sons in, no. in a war zone? I, I just can't. can't you imagine. can't. I have a close friend who, she is a, what, a gold star family. It's not yeah. something she wants to be part of. Her brother served in Vietnam. He was probably 18 to 20 years old. They never found his body. They eventually, I think, declared him dead because of time. I can't imagine the pain of that. No. You can't even do a proper grieving mm -hmm. of your loved one. But you do what you That's can. That's why we do what we do, right? Yeah. That's why we do what we do. So War is not healthy for children and other living things. That's right. Mm -hmm. If so. there are no other issues... I move we adjourn. <laughs> well, I can have my right second. <laughs> There's a second, okay. Who All is that favor? that second? Carolyn. Carolyn, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone All object? Right. Sorry, I, I jumped okay. out in the middle. I mean, I stayed in, but I got a work call and I had to, I'm so sorry about that. No, you're good. You're good. You gotta be you're out. You're out. We have to multitask. <laughs> Too much. Well, Too my okay. grandson is grateful because he's gotten out of his 20 minutes of reading tonight because he doesn't have school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's officially 7.58, so we can call it at that time. And I will, um, over the next day or two with the most, put all of those things that I mentioned into an email to each of you so we can go on from there.
Okay. okay. Thank All you. Right. Jessica, Thank happy you. birthday to your mother. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what a beautiful Thank lady. Oh my God. Thank you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thinking, That's your mother? She yeah. And I know she's super she young. Great. She <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> good evening. Have a good evening, good night, everyone. everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye.